Namaste. My name is Reva Bhardwaj and I'm a biotechnology student advocating for carbon neutrality and sustainable development. I'd like to thank TEDx Shulin University for giving me this opportunity to speak at this esteemed platform on this extremely important global subject, very relevant to the Indian context. Now I'd like to request you all to lend me your ears and attention for the next 12 minutes and hear me out. These COVID-19 times have yet again made us realize that we are a victim of our deeds. And the worst part to me is not the fear of going out and having chances of contracting this virus. No, I don't want to go out because I hate wearing a mask. And I'm pretty sure most of you would resonate with my feeling. Wearing a mask or a protective shield in scorching heat and being helpless about it. Because if not this, then what? Now, I'd like you to imagine a dry and sweltering day. You're out wearing a mask and carrying an oxygen cylinder. Oh, that's scary, isn't it? At least it is for me. Maybe too hypothetical for you, imaginary, futuristic, or maybe untrue. But to the extent that we are adding carbon dioxide in the atmosphere by burning fossil fuels and endless deforestation, it feels very painful to say that this uncomfortable situation that I asked you to imagine about might come true. You must be thinking that we are giving too much importance to carbon dioxide and neglecting the other greenhouse gases. Then let me tell you that carbon dioxide puts us in the most significant risk of irreversible climate change. It stays longest in the atmosphere as compared to other greenhouse gases, trapping more heat and continuously increasing the Earth's temperature. By the Paris Agreement, we have to halve the global carbon emissions by 2030 and have carbon neutral economies by 2050. And where are we headed towards? Where are we today? We are amidst a global pandemic. Now, isn't this alarming? Lately, we see a lot of large industries talking about sustainable development, trying to implement new technologies, modifying them to make their industrial processes more sustainable. But is it enough? Only large industries talking about sustainable development and trying to address this issue does this help us achieve our ultimate goal? These industries are already aware enough. They have ample resources and the best in class technology. Also, they can wither out the long gestation period and make these implementations profitable for them. But India also has 63 million industries running at micro, small and medium scale employing over 110 million people and contributing significantly to India's GDP. Don't we have to think about the sustainable development of these industries to make our processes more sustainable, to build a green supply chain? We want to build a green supply chain because we want to ensure that when a product is being made, everything that is put into that product is in an environmental friendly way starting from the procurement of raw materials to discarding the product at the end of its life cycle should be in a sustainable manner. Notably, most of these industries are located in rural areas running at a micro scale. Of course, they do not have the best in class technology and many resources or are not even aware enough. So they cannot adopt all sustainable measures within a year or two. But something can be done within a year or two. They can take small yet efficient steps that will bring out very significant and impactful changes in the years to come. They can start with greenhouse gas accounting. This accounting method ensures that the company will be able to check its greenhouse gas emissions coming from various industrial processes. Because in the order to address an issue, is to acknowledge that there is one and then to find the gravity of it. 
For example, these industries can start checking their carbon emissions from vehicles or their electricity usage, the waste generated, smoke coming from their equipment, etc. After checking these carbon emissions, they can try to find out the problematic area contributing maximum to these emissions. And then specific measures can be taken to reduce those emissions. Simple doable steps, which are going to bring very positive results in a couple of years. And I feel very proud and happy to share that in the course of my journey, working with some of these industries, spreading awareness about climate change and sustainability, talking to these industry people, closely monitoring them. I have witnessed some of them develop sustainably and they're benefiting from it. Simple yet efficient steps, one step at a time, but being informed enough to take that step. If I must tell you about one of the many potential solutions available, that is solar harvesting. Yes, utilizing solar energy can be very beneficial for the industries. And not to worry, there are already many government agencies subsidizing rooftop solar harvesting. This can be specifically useful for industries like meat, dairy, timber, plywood, beverages, textile, bricks and blocks. And owing to the pollution, the plastic and meat industry is contributing and also keeping in mind that these industries cannot be completed, cannot be completely eliminated at this stage. So saving a little on their production might help. By the end of 2030, we are targeting to halve our global carbon emissions and on the current track, we are about to reach 56 GT by 2030. Now, where do we put the excessive carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere? Any ideas? We can convert the captured carbon dioxide. Yes, you must be thinking this isn't something new. Plants do it all the time. But where are they? Where are plants? Fact, we have destroyed nature's carbon sink. But we humans are intelligent, aren't we? We destroy the natural solutions, but then build something artificial that mimics it. We are funny, aren't we? In today's world, we can convert the captured carbon dioxide into industrially valuable products. It is not only beneficial for the environment, but also boosts industrial growth because we can use carbon dioxide as a raw material, bringing it back to the production cycle. Carbon dioxide can be converted into a variety of chemicals and materials like synthetic fuel, gasoline, ethanol, carbon nanotubes, etc. But what excites me the most is carbon dioxide conversion to methanol because methanol has a remarkable potential of reducing these carbon emissions by 65 to 95%. It can be a very good alternative to fossil fuels. Methanol is a clean fuel that does not leave soot on burning and emits lesser carbon dioxide on burning than the conventional fuels like gasoline or jet oil. Methanol also has many other, many other advantages. It can be used to make everyday products, in making plywood, in water treatment process, in electricity production, as a precursor for many industrial processes. Wonder fuel, isn't it? I'd like to call methanol a wonder fuel because it is beneficial in almost all of the carbon emission problems that we are facing today. There are many techniques of converting carbon dioxide into methanol, but we are still working to find out the most efficient technique. Because in the order of removing one pollutant from the atmosphere, we do not want to put any other type of pollutant into it. So we are trying to innovate and sustainably innovate rather using biochemical techniques. 
because when we are putting a combination of two techniques like biological and chemical we are trying to address three specific factors first that the process is eco-friendly by addressing the pollution caused by the byproducts second increasing the utilization of carbon dioxide and last increasing the productivity by lowering the costs over time as compared to other products we still haven't created our magnificent product but we are trying trying to innovate and adapt sustainably because trying is the only thing we can do until we get the desired results as edison once said i haven't failed I have just discovered 10,000 ways that don't work. And we can all try, can't we? As students, we can try and create awareness. As researchers and scientists, we can try to progress in the right direction. As industry owners, we can try to make our processes more sustainable, our products more eco-friendly. As communities or as individuals, we can try to have plantation drives cleanliness drives. We can try to reduce our consumption as much as possible, reuse and recycle. Because we don't want to wait for the day when our earth will not even have enough to fulfill for our necessities in the process of fulfilling our greeds. We already have witnessed an alarming signal of awakening in the form of, these, of this COVID-19. And again, I'd like to reiterate the aspirational targets our country is aiming at to build a cleaner and greener future. Very recently, on 21st November, our Honorable Prime Minister addressed that how our country is aiming at reducing its carbon footprint by up to 35%. The very next day, at G20 Riyadh summit, he motivated us all and talked about how India is meeting its Paris Agreement targets and moreover exceeding them. So I want to aspire you all. I want to motivate you to fight climate change and save our planet Earth because this is the only one we have. Thank you.